hello. I'm already making myself laugh. Um, I'm in my pajamas and I have a cute little hat and I'm here to talk about the books that I read in November. Guys, I just don't even know. I, I'm feeling a little giddy. I'm just in a really good mood, which is such a good feeling because it's been a while. Okay, so I'm gonna just go over all the books. I read a lot of ebooks and I DNF'd one. So we'll just get into it. Feels like a very long time ago that I read this, but I did read by the book by Amanda Sellett. This is a YA contemporary romance book about a girl who has to change schools and it's her adjusting to this new school and the boy that she meets at the new school. And it was pretty decent. I gave it four stars. Like there was nothing wrong with it, but once again, YA is just too young for me. I don't enjoy reading teenagers in high school anymore. So that is uh, the verdict on that. But like as a book, if I liked teenage stories, this would be a good book. So I also read a book called Fortune's Fall by Katherine Barger. This is a Christian dystopian book. Um, this was sent to me by the author and it was really good, like really well written. I liked the main character that we were following. She was interesting and I liked her take on the world. And the way that Christianity was like woven into this story was very strategic, I feel, and kind of quiet, but like, you know if you know kind of thing. So that was cool. It's similar to The Giver, that, that's the vibe that I got. Like this girl is graduating and each graduate has a job that they're going to and they have to stay at that job like forever. And her new job is to be the president's dream interpreter. So I didn't really catch how she gains that ability, but somehow she has the ability to interpret dreams. So she is under the mentorship of the current dream interpreter. So the president has a dream and she is a part of interpreting it, but her mentor intentionally says the wrong interpretation so she's confused by that and then kind of like a bunch of you know secrets and conspiracies come out and she ends up on the run eventually the one thing is there were a lot of characters and i found it a little bit difficult to like get attached to them i really liked her friend her best friend her best guy friend Th there were so many twists and turns in this so many like backstabbers that i did not see coming and overall, very adventurous and exciting. So I think this is a great first book. Um, I think it's gonna be a series, so that's cool. And yeah, definitely recommend. After that, I read The White Christmas Inn by Colleen Wright, and I've already hyped this book a lot. This is the new Catching Christmas of the year. I really liked this book, super good. I thought it was just really wholesome and sweet. So I thought this was a great Christmas story. You follow this inn that is struggling financially, and they have one last, event happening, which is gonna be a wedding, and things go from there. Um, the wedding goes awry, and there's a lot of other guests at the inn at that time that you follow the perspectives of, and every perspective I connected with, I loved the story, loved the characters. It was just great, and I thought it ended really nicely. So that is that, five stars. I also read The Christmas Star by Donna Van Leer, and I gave this three stars. It was okay, um, I just, Something about the writing wasn't very compelling, but it was a totally fine story. Like there wasn't anything wrong. It just, something about the writing just wasn't very exciting for me, but it was still good. Um, you follow a guy who works as a maintenance guy at a school, and then you also follow a little girl at the school. She's in an after school program, and there's a woman that works at the after school program, and it's kind of about those three and how they cross paths and stuff. So it was cute, definitely, but, um, didn't really stand out. Okay, and I'm in the middle of reading the Christmas box and I'm almost done with it. I'm on page 80, so I mean, kind of almost done. Um, but I'm really enjoying this. It's just, I don't know what it is, but I'm really enjoying it. You follow a family who takes a job kind of to move into this older woman's house to like help take care of her and help take care of the house. And it's at Christmas time and the guy's kind of a workaholic and so he kind of neglects his daughter and so there's a bit of a story going along with him like realizing that family is more important than work. Um, there's a couple like just little Christmassy things happening that are just really festive and cute. And I like the characters, I like the way it's written. I'm into it. 
it's really simple, but I like it. So this will probably get four stars, but like a very happy, good four star. So we're on to the nonfiction. Um, I started this book, 100 Days to Brave by Annie F. Downs. I started it in August and I finished it in November because um, it's 100 days and I really enjoyed this. I'm pleasantly surprised. To be honest, any devotional that is about like bravery and courage and like stuff like that doesn't really appeal to me because I am a timid person. Um, I don't like putting myself out there and I'm not, I'm not a loud person. Maybe you wouldn't think that <laughs> from my videos, but in real life, I'm a quiet person. And so anytime someone talks about being brave, I automatically picture like doing crazy things in public and like having attention on you. But that's not what this was. It was really about being, being brave in yourself and like as a person, like all that God calls you to be as a child of God and your identity and like there's a couple things that it was like oh talk to your neighbor or something like that but there was never anything like outrageous that i was like okay this is not realistic it actually felt like doable all of these things so that was a nice surprise and yeah i really enjoyed this i tabbed like three of the days because they like literally spoke to my situation on that day and i just love when god does that so yeah, um, super enjoyed this. Would definitely recommend if you ever see it around. It's a good one. So then I read Lies We Believe About God by William Paul Young. Um, if you saw my TBR, I was like, I've seen a lot of bad reviews for this. And so like, I'm going in hesitant, but also like, I want to keep an open mind. And this, okay, yeah, it was interesting. I agreed with most of it, but I tabbed the stories that I was like, hmm? Each chapter was a lie um, and it was titled whatever the lie was. So one of the lie chapters was hell is separation from God. And to me, this one was a very theological chapter where you had to like really go where he was going. And it was tricky to like think of what he was saying. That one got me thinking and I was fascinated by it. So I wouldn't say I agree or disagree with that one. But then we came to, there was two that had me thinking and I'm like, mm, the way he worded that, I don't agree with, but I think I can see what he's saying. So one of the other lies was death is more powerful than God. So which, which is the lie. So I agree with that, like that death is not more powerful than God because Jesus defeated death. But the way he talked about it, it was like, you get to choose after you die too. And so I'm like, um, I don't know. I don't know, you know, like we don't really know, but the way he described it, I was like, I don't really know about that one. So that one was interesting. <laughs> and then what was the other one? Um, you will never find God in a box. I think just the way he described it, like we need to have just no box at all. Like the box needs to not exist. But as humans, we need boxes, like categories. And so, but he is saying that um, see, I, I can't even explain it. It's, I'm really, I'm stumped. Just that God cannot be confined to any box we put him in. And yet, like, yes, I agree with that, but I don't really know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so here's what he says at the end of this chapter. And this is what I agree with. So I don't really remember why I tapped this chapter but whatever. It says the only time we will find God in a box is because God wants to be where we are. And that is all the time. So yes, he's in a box because we, because he has to be in one for us to even relate to him, but he's not naturally in a box. And I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> so did that make any sense? I don't know, but definitely a thought provoking book. And most of the chapters I agreed with was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there was the couple that I was like, hmm, interesting. I don't know. So yeah, that was enjoyable actually. It was really good. Had good conversations with my sister over that one. The last book is this cute little one. It's called God Thinks You're Wonderful by Max Licato and I read this on my birthday and I actually teared up reading this book. This month has really like pierced my heart in a lot of ways and so I feel very emotional lately <laughs> in 
a good and a bad way, but like anything to do with Jesus and his goodness and his love, it just makes me cry. So there were enough pages in this book that talked about how much God loves me that I was like, <laughs> yes, he loves me. And it was really great. So yeah, I loved this book. And that is everything, guys. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. Really excited about this month. This is going up, I guess, a ways into December. I am just having a great time, you know? Hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.